talk about the, uh, the the tour a little bit. The ski mask way tour. How, how did how did you and uh, Rod Digger come together to, to put this tour together? Um. Well, to be honest, me and Digger, she's always been kind of like a big sister to me. Um. But you know how it is when you're in the industry. It's like kind of, especially when you're not in the same city. It's just kind of like a social media or phone type energy. And my birthday came around, and I do my Jones Experience show every year. So I've been in contact with her consistently because that's fam. And I was like, I want you to come out to LA to do my my Jones experience. And she was down, she stayed with me and everything. I was not letting her leave the city without doing a verse. I had the mic at the house, the laptop, everything. And that would just have been ridiculous for me to just let her go. Um, everybody was like, so is there a record? Like people would see us posting at each other, hanging out, and they're like, where's the record? So um, Ski Mask Way was just kind of like an inside joke. Uh, throughout my birthday weekend, we were trying to get to a venue uh, to have my birthday dinner, and we did everything was like a two-hour wait. Okay. And so the, my homegirl, who uh, used to work in food, she was like, I know the girl that works at this restaurant, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand behind this table, and as soon as they get up, I just need y'all to just walk back there. And so Digga's just outside smoking a cigarette, like, I mean, I'm down with the ski mask way, like, whatever we got to do. I just fell out laughing, like that was the funniest shit to me. Right. So she said it a couple more times and it just kind of was like the theme of the weekend, like let's just gully and shit, you know right, what I mean? Right. So we was listening to beats and I was like, that's a record, Ski Mask Way. Ski Mask Way. And everything on that, that record is like little jabs at our weekend, so. Now, yeah. now it sounds like, did she know she was going to have to, uh, to, to jump on a record with you before she came out? Uh, I'm sure she didn't even really. She was it. She was coming. She claims it was a vacation, but I'm like, where the fuck did you say you was gonna be on vacation? Because I didn't say you was on vacation. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I'm sure she, it probably crossed her mind. It, it wasn't a, it wasn't a problem for her, and it definitely wasn't a problem for me. Uh, we just jabbed at each other about it because we, you know, she kind of just came out to LA for my birthday, so she could have a good time. Um, but you got Rod Digger or whomever on your couch or whatever. Right. You all get a song out of right. that weekend. Right. You have to. Yes. You have to. And it was it was pretty flawless with us. Like we would we would write a little bit, take a nap, wake up, sip some Stella Rosa, take a nap again. Right. It was just like big sister, little sister energy. So it was perfect. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Now, how, how how far back does this relationship go with Rod Digger? Uh, she tells me because I don't remember the year, but. I think she was promoting her record with Knots. That I think that was around 2008 or 2009, okay. and she was in Atlanta. And at the time, I was bubbling in Atlanta. Okay. Um, and she had a show at Apache Cafe with Knots and a couple other people, and I met her there. She's heard of me before, but that was where we met in person, and it, that's the rest is history. Okay, okay. How many more stops on the on the uh, Ski Mask Way tour? Um, well, right now we're in Austin. We have two more for this leg of the tour. We have uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and then we have um, D.C., which is kind of like a little walk-through club situation. Okay. Um, but it's still a date. And then we're going to start the second leg of the tour in the first week of February. So I'm looking for that now, actually. Okay. okay. Um, because she'll be out in LA to do some like a one-off, and then I was like, "Nigga, well then let's keep going. Right. Like, right. This is just the beginning." So. Right. So, right. Let's yeah. talk. Let's talk about um, kind of that 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 one record that that put your name in or your face, your name in front of everyone where people took notice to to Larry Jones. Um. To be honest with you, it has been different crowds and different phases of that like I I can think of about four different songs that had a different reaction with the, with the whole nother wave of people um, so the, the one that comes to my head immediately I would say would be my first video that I did was Trapped in the City Lights that's the song that I'm still performing it was the first visual that I had um, but my, pers my perspective of that is from Atlanta you know that was where I was performing it and people heard of it and I, I think that was the first song that got ever ever got played on Sirius for me, like Static Select like, played it or whatever. Um, but then on that album I dropped my joint with Esperanza Spalding called Lost on Repeat. So that obviously is a whole nother crowd. That's jazz, right. fans and all of that. Um, fast forward from there, I did a joint called Reasons Why with Z Rich, who was formerly known as Fiend. 
that's the one that got on that TV, and I had a video of that, a lot of views. So for me, it's like a, it's seasons, you know what I mean? So I guess if, however you know with Lyric Jones, you'll have a different perspective on what song that would be. Okay. So, um, last September called Gems from the Cubicle, and that was intended to be a record to kind of precede me going on tour with Cali Agents. I needed some some type of a <laughs> project, but it ended up coming after, um, and it's cool. I dropped a couple uh, videos from there as well. So. Okay. Okay. Now, now you you do a lot of you do a lot of records with with male artists. Do you, do you feel like you have to go especially hard when you're on? I mean, because your, your your lyricism is is on point all the time. But when you when you I don't I don't we haven't seen you. Let me say it this way: we haven't seen you, seen you do a lot of records with with female artists. Maybe a couple. But when you when you're on these tracks with like Planet Asia or you know cats like that, do, do you feel like you have to you know really represent for female artists when you're on those tracks? I mean everything we do. I feel like you got to represent for, for women, period. Um, so not necessarily with songs, because I, I don't really think of it as a male-female thing, to be honest. I don't go, oh, I need a, two girls and then three guys. Like, I don't think that way. Everybody else does. Um, but with Gold Chain, I mean, it's, I'm not the only girl associated with the homies. We got Rogue Venom. We got a female producer. Like, it's, it's more than that. Um, but I actually have a, a handful. I've done a song with Book Brown. I've done a song with Star. She's on my first album. Uh, obviously, Rod Digger, me and Rogue Venom dropped a record. Me and Il Camille did a record. Okay. So I have a, a handful of records with, with women. So um, more with guys, I guess, because it's easier for me to just get them to hop on something. Or they're the ones asking me to collab. Okay. Um, it's not really... A lot of the songs I do have collab with, with other ladies. I was the initiator with that. Let's go back to uh, um, Gems from the from the Cubicle, uh -huh. the EP. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us about how long it took you to to, to put that project together. Um, to be honest, it took about to put together Gems from the Cubicle took a couple weeks, like two three weeks. Um, I was just steadfast on getting a project done before I went on tour, and when it was confirmed with the guys that I was going to be on the Cali Agents tour, I was like, I need a fucking album. Like, I need to put more, put together, together something. Right. Um, I think I threw one on there that I already had. Um, so glad I had already had on Dirty Diggs' previous project, the Robin project. Right. And then I just cooked up six more. And I was writing that whole project at work, at my cubicle, at, on my lunch break, on the bus to the studio. Like, And so that's literally, those were the gems that I was giving y'all from so the, the title of the project came together. Yeah, well, Expl explain that. Originally, the <laughs> it's funny. Originally, the project I was I had something corny slated. Um, originally, I wanted to call it lyrics from the cubicle or something like that. Um, and Planet Asia was like, "That's corny. Like that's whack." And I was like, "What you mean?" He was like, "Lyrics. So that's so like hip hopity corny. Like that's just not fly enough." And I was like offended. Like, what are you talking about? He was like, "You need to like come up with some like medallions or or some shit like that." Like, and I was like, "All right." And I thought about it, and I I kind of agreed. I was like, "Okay, well maybe gems from the cubicle because the idea was to drop it in June, and I'm a Gemini and okay. I'm trying to give okay. you know jewels or whatever okay. from the cubicle. So that's how the gems came about." Okay. okay. What, what would you say is uh, maybe your favorite track from from the the EP? Um, it's that I would probably have to say that it would be Double Life. Okay. Um, that one is the realest for me, and the way it came together was kind of was kind of cool. Daniel McLean, who's the vocalist on the song, he recorded all his vocals in his on his iPhone in a closet. <laughs> like for me, I was just like, yo, I need, we need to do another one. Because if you know me, he was on my Love's Trail Mix project too. Um, and I was like, we, I need another one for you, bro. Like, let's do it. And I just gave him the, the record and he sent me like vocals, like stacked and everything from his iPhone. He doesn't have a studio. Um, and then the video process, like everything, it was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in that record. Um, and it's the realest one on the project. Like, we just talking about living literally what I was dealing with, about to go on tour and then having to go to work and come back to that same cubicle when I got from back from the tour. 
Um, so yeah, I would say that's the, the realest. It's funny because it's not my story anymore, but um, it definitely is somebody else's. So. Right, right. So you, you talked about um, you know writing rhymes on your your uh, your break or your five minute break. Um, how many bars do you put together on those those little five minute breaks and ten minute um, breaks? It depends. <laughs> I mean, it would mainly be my lunch break, but every now and then something will come to me. I'll listen to a song, or whatever, and then I'll just be like, I'll take my fifteen and then write. Okay. Yeah, I okay. can't really put a, a number on how many bars. Right, right, I'll right. just write something. Right. Yeah. So, so what what's next? What what do you have? Do you have any uh, any any projects in in the works? Uh, any um, new material. The next step, it's I mean I'm I'm a I wear my heart on my sleeve. I don't sugarcoat anything. Um, but to be honest, I'm not really inspired to drop an album right now. Um, I'm still trying to push gems from the cubicle. I'm still trying to push love trail mix. Like I don't really feel the world deserves another project. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of money that I don't have. It's a lot of people that gotta be involved as far as mixing, mastering, promoting, or whatever. That's just some real shit. I don't have it. So until I get it and <laughs> to do it correctly, I just don't want to do a project where I'm asking a million favors from people. I want to be able to break bread with folk, get people money to mix it right, master it right, get session musicians in the studio, put a budget behind a video for once. Like I really am tired of that. Like just scrap it for pennies just to put out a, a record. I'll definitely be dropping Lucy's, like little joints or whatever, and probably like little mix EPs or whatever, but like an album, I'm gonna need like some resources to, to offset Jump Street. You know what I mean? That was my debut. I had Esperanza on there, Fight Dog or whatever. I gotta do better than that, you know? So I'm not gonna digress because of lack of resources. Um, but I'm definitely gonna keep trying to get those, keep shining, like I'm, do, I'm doing Sway in the morning, like on Friday, you know, trying to just get my name out there in different platforms. So you never know how, how I feel in a month or two. Um, but I'm definitely going to keep recording and putting music out. That's pretty much it. Focusing on the first half of the year. My Jones Experience show is in June, so I want to try to find sponsors for that. Try to get me and Digga, you know, some sponsors for the next leg of the tour. And, you know, just writing here and there. That's pretty much it. Talk to us about your, your Jones Experience. Yeah, that's uh, my annual show that I always do on my birthday. Every now and then it, I didn't do it on my birthday just because of where I was in the world or whatever. Um, but I like, that's what I love to do. And I don't usually get gifts on my birthday. When you're grown, you don't usually get them. Right, right. <laughs> so I want to give myself something and it's just, I'll spend money to get the people I like on a show for me. Um, and when I was living in Atlanta, I did my first one, and it was like amazing. I had Avery Sunshine, Shantae Can, like these are like really dope singers. And then I had all the homies from Atlanta, like it was sold out. It was my first show that I did. So from there, that I kind of tried to keep that going and annually, whether it was an album release or something, do whatever. So it wasn't called the Jones Experience. I don't think I titled it something official until I got to LA. Um, and last year, last October was amazing. Like, I had Razzcast, I had Planet Asia, I had Chocolate, uh, Ill-Ass Vocalist, um, I had Alex Isley, who's Ron Isley's niece, who's an amazing vocalist, and I had Avion Crockett come, who's a comedian who raps, like, amazing, like, packed. And that was just like, okay, I have to do more of this. And my birthday last year is when I brought Rod Digger, Razzcast came, and Planet Asia as well came again and rocked my Razzcast and set, and I had two vocalists as well. And the point is to have a full band for everybody. We all rock, we don't do this track shit no more. We all gonna rock to a band, and we're all gonna rock with the same band. Um, and I, because I sing and rap, I like to have both of, both of those elements, and comedy, and an LDJ all on the show. This is supposed to be like, this is the Lyric Jones brand. This show is what Lyric is. Um, and everybody loves it. I bring beautiful women out, and guys are cool, and all races, and. LA has been really showing love for the Jones experience. Um, so I, I, I want to do it better than last year. So I got to sit back and marinate on who I want and how I'm going to get them. <laughs> so so what, when, is that, when is that plan for next year? Uh, my birthday is June 10th. So it'll probably be June 10th because it's falls on a Saturday. So I'm going to try to do it that weekend. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, LA is a different city. Yeah. When you're talking about you know, entertainment. Yeah. Uh, how long did it take you to, to, to transition? 
did, did you move from Atlanta or from Boston to? I moved from Atlanta to LA. To LA? Um, and it took a while. And it's still taking a while. Like, I'm not completely, I'm settled, um, but it, that's all relative as what you consider settled. Like, I kind of shuffled up my settledness when I quit my job. So it's like I'm unsettled again. Um, but it took me at least two and a half, three years to feel like, okay, I'm in a, a type of a flow or rhythm. I know the spots that I like to go to or whatever. I don't think I really did a show or anything like that. It took a year. And even that, people were shocked to see that I got so adjusted, like, did a show of my own. Um, but yeah, it takes a while. And the hip hop community, as far as me even knowing cats in that plane, took even longer than that. Okay. Uh, and I actually credit Rod Diggins to that because I was complaining to her. I was like, man, LA don't got shit. I don't see no. Where they at? Like, I hear about them, these West Coast folk, but I don't ever see them nowhere. Um, you get these huge mainstream shows with game or whomever, and then you get like the little like coffee shop joints that are just like not really worth the time to go to all the time, you know? Right. Never get like a uh, right. scene like I'm what I'm used to in Atlanta. Um, she's like, you don't know Planet Asia and Raskas and Feel the Agony and, and you don't know none of them? I'm like, no, who they at? She's like, all right. Well, I want to say about two months later, she called me and was like, I got a show that I'm doing in LA. I want you to open up, I want you to perform. And that's where I met Tri-State and Planet Asia. The rest is history for that. Well, that's, 